the 12th century. The Third Crusade. Two great leaders would come to symbolize the struggle between the empires of Islam and Christianity. Saladin, the Arab world's greatest champion, and Richard the Lionheart, Christendom's finest warrior. Divided by religion, they would be brought together in holy war. Driven by honor, obsessed with fame and power, Richard and Saladin would ascend into legend, fighting for the sacred city of Jerusalem. Based on the latest research from both Muslim and Christian sources, this is their story. A Muslim army battered at the gates of Jerusalem. United behind Saladin, the most powerful commander they'd ever had. For four generations, the holy city had been in the hands of the Christian infidel. Now Saladin was poised to reclaim Jerusalem for the Muslim world. Inside the holy city, the Christian population panicked. Mothers hacked off their daughter's hair in the hope that Saladin's men wouldn't rape them. Monks hid their sacred icons. They had good reason to be terrified. Saladin was driven on by the terrible events of the First Crusade, 88 years earlier. Following an appeal from the Catholic Church, the First Crusaders had ripped Jerusalem from the heart of the Islamic world, slaughtering every living thing in the name of their Christian God. The First Crusader invasion of Jerusalem was horrific. A lot of blood was shed for no reason. The amount of bloodshed was not based on military needs, but rather to create terror. Now, Saladin had gathered his own terrifying army. He believed that soon Jerusalem and victory would be his. Islam could take its revenge for the First Crusade. But Saladin knew very little of the remote corner of the world that had spawned the Crusaders. Europe. Europe was considered to be a cold, foggy, uh, ambiguous place where people actually didn't have a clear idea how to govern themselves, their religion wasn't clear to them, and they didn't have a proper culture or civilization. And what the Arabs had in mind was philosophy, medicine, music, literature, poetry. And the Europeans were thought to lack all of these things. Contrary to Arab belief, Western society was increasingly sophisticated and strong. Valuing military skill above all else, it bred ever more deadly warriors, determined to hold on to Jerusalem. The man who would one day be Saladin's nemesis was one of Europe's most proud, feared, and powerful princes, Richard of England. Richard's heroic deeds would one day earn him the title, Lionheart. 
Richard was the member of a fractious, violent family that ruled England and northern France in the 12th century. He was very strong through his bravery, through his astuteness, through his intelligence. He was somebody who was admired and respected throughout the known world. <laughs> A devout Catholic, Richard came from an intensely religious society, obsessed with Jerusalem. The holy city was thousands of miles away, but it was the epicenter of his faith. Here, Jesus Christ had lived and died. Since the First Crusade, generations of knights had fought to keep it in Christian hands. It was a deeply felt belief within Christian society at this time that if the land on which Christ had walked, if the city in which he was buried was not in Christian hands, that was an affront to their God, that their God would feel that they had let him down. Also, if Jerusalem was in the hands of men of another faith, the pilgrim route to Jerusalem might be barred for generations unless you controlled that route and the holy city itself. Prince Richard knew he had an obligation to Jerusalem, that he might be called on to become a crusader. As he honed his skills fighting Christian rivals in Europe, the holy city was never far from his mind. Jerusalem was in Richard's blood. His great-grandfather had been king of the Holy City. His father, the King of England, sent huge sums of money to the Holy Land. Even his mother had been on crusade. It was natural that Richard would follow in his ancestors' crusading footsteps. While Richard was still a child, Saladin was a young man in his 20s. As a polo-playing cavalry officer, he never imagined a future as one of the Arab world's greatest heroes. He wasn't even an Arab. We know that he was born in 1137 in Tikrit the birthplace of Saddam Hussein. His family were Kurds. He was, to some extent anyway, an ethnic outsider in the lands where he became so powerful. As Saladin came of age, descendants of the first European crusaders, known as the Franks, were fortifying their new kingdom of Jerusalem 